Hello everyone and welcome to Second Sunday. Join us for art making fun inspired by artworks from the Canner Art Center and the Anderson Collection at Stanford University. Our art making activity today is inspired by the work of Jasper Johns, an artist who has changed the course of art history during the span of his over 65 year career. Jasper Johns was born in 1930 and is now 91 years old. He was honored by President Obama in 2011 when he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He is famous for creating artwork using familiar images in unfamiliar ways. He made many paintings of the American flag, for example, in many different sizes and colors. Our featured artwork today is a series of 10 prints made by Jasper Johns. Numbers are his most frequently used motif or recurring element in his artwork. The numbers zero through nine are familiar to everyone and part of our everyday lives. Jasper Johns calls them things the mind already knows. He used a standard stencil design to draw the numbers. Then he gave each number its own personality by experimenting with different materials and mark-making techniques. For our art-making activity, we will experiment with printmaking like Jasper Johns did and use familiar things to make art. We will use household objects, things we see every day, to create some exciting and surprising prints. Find some fruits and vegetables and slice them in half to reveal an interesting shape. Making art with vegetables that might otherwise be thrown away is a fun and inexpensive way to learn about printmaking. Dip the vegetables into the paint, then press it on the paper and repeat to create a pattern. Using cookie cutters is a fun way to make figures that the mind already knows, like stars and trees. Jasper Johns created over 170 artworks using the basic number digits zero through nine, with endless variety in how he did them. Look again at this number series. He almost always made his numbers using the same font based on stencil numbers, like the commercial stencils that are used for sign painting. Stencils are a way to avoid making any variation, and that's exactly what he wanted, no variation in the images. Because the numbers themselves are so familiar, the difference is in the mark-making techniques. Jasper John said, take an object, do something to it, do something else to it. Let's take a moment to look at each number individually. As you look closely, notice how each one makes you feel. What does repetition mean? This is figure zero. I think about meditation and feel calm when I look at this image. Now it's your turn. Jasper Johns creates the same image in a variety of different ways and in many different mediums. Jasper Johns is an artist whose work questions the very nature of art making. In our art making activity, we will learn to make something and discover something new while we are making it. He makes things that are seen but not looked at. Jasper Johns has said that all he was painting was a fact, and it is up to the viewers to decide how the artwork makes them think and feel. He also said the meaning of the artwork is in the making. His work is about how the nature of perception changes depending on where you are or who you are. He used signs and symbols from our everyday world and daily lives. He used signs and symbols from our everyday world 
and brought them into art in a way that was extremely shocking. He used things that the mind already knows. Jasper Johns used things that the mind already knows, things that if you closed your eyes, you could picture, like the American flag and numbers. He said, sometimes I see it and then I paint it. Other times I paint it and then I see it. What do you see here? When you look at your own artwork, you may like it right away, or you may like it better tomorrow. Jasper John said, comparing his art making process to the forces in nature, at every point in nature, there is something to see. My work contains similar possibilities for the changing focus of the eyes. Jasper John said, my primary concern is visual form. The visual meaning may be discovered afterwards by those who look for it. He created the numbers as a set. They seem to be talking to each other and with his other artworks. This is figure seven and it has a picture inside it. It is the face of the most famous painting in all the world. The Mona Lisa. Why do you think it is here? What do you think it means? Like memories and emotions, the numbers keep coming back. Jasper John repeats themes like numbers over and over because to him, they are like memories and emotions. They keep coming back in different ways with different meanings at different times and in different places. Always the same and never the same. Jasper Johns was exploring what art could be. When he made this number series, he was exploring what art could be. He wondered what was the appropriate subject matter for a work of art. This is a surprising way to show numbers. Do you recognize these shapes? Can you find all the numbers? What new shapes do you see? Let's make some art. Choose veggies and fruit to make your prints. Dip them in some paint on a plate and then press them into the paper. That's a print. Cookie cutters have familiar everyday shapes and you can use them to make prints. Have fun experimenting. When your prints are dry, you can add some drawings or words. One of the best parts about making art is sharing it with others and seeing how your art inspires their ideas. Now let's watch and listen as our museum educators show us how they did this activity. Hello everyone. We're gonna make art with a potato today. And we're gonna start by putting paint on our plates with red, yellow and blue. Hooray! And then cut the potato. You may want to have an adult help you with the sharp knife. And then you can use a carving knife or plastic knife to cut a shape out of your potato. I'm cutting a heart out of my potato. And we're gonna make heart prints. All oh, and we're dipping it in the yellow. And you can see a little bit oh, with the blue it's a little better to see all the different prints you can make with a potato in red look at that print 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 and i'm practicing just stamping everywhere look at that and then i'm going to try and make a design with it um we'll see what it looks like yeah what am i going to start with oh i think what i learned from the first print was that my paint was too thick so I'm trying to spread it out a little bit so it's a little thinner and we're going to start with yellow and it looks like we're printing in a circle and then I wiped off the yellow and now we're doing red look at that and in a circle one two three 
Here we go. And then, wiping it off again, and blue. Look at that. And if you wanted to mix colors together, you could do that. I have an extra plate there, but I didn't mix the colors. And now that I have my printed design, I'm going to let it dry for a bit. So I'm cleaning up a little bit, and then I'm going to set it aside. And then it will dry, and afterwards I'm going to do a little extra and add some marks to it using pens. So I'm taking out my pen box, and it might be a little hard to see, but I am drawing around the red hearts with the red pen with a little space and then marking with little lines all the way around the hearts. And I'm going to work like this around each red heart. Look at that. One, two, three. Oh, and then what's that? I'm making tiny little blue hearts to fill in the spaces in between the other hearts. And then I'm going to color them in with a light blue. Look at that. So many little tiny hearts. So many hearts. Just so much heart. Lots of love. It's awesome. And I'm doing a little orange. And then I'll be done. Ta-da! Filling in a little extra space. But then, yes, I will be done. <laughs> and you can do something like this at home. Have fun. Hi, everyone. For today's activity, all you're going to need is a sheet of paper. I had yellow paper, but anything works. Some paints, some paint brushes, and some fruits or veggies cut in half. In my case, I used some old ginger that was sitting in my fridge because I really love the shape of it. So first, we'll start out by putting our paints out. I used red and blue because I thought the colors would look really cool on the yellow paper. So to start, we take one of our objects and paint the flat side with whatever color we choose. To paint your object, first paint in a really thin layer just to make sure everything is covered, then add some more paint to create a solid, thick layer. Now press it against the paper really, really hard, and once you take it off, it should leave a really nice print. Now keep repeating this for different shapes and different colors, whatever you think is best. And when you press down, make sure you press really, really hard on all the different edges of whatever fruits or veggies or plants you decide to use. I thought my prints kind of ended up looking like trees or like coral, so I decided to keep playing with those themes and thinking about those shapes. Don't be afraid to let your prints overlap, and don't worry if they're not complete or perfect. I really liked seeing how every time I pressed a shape down, the print was a little bit different in its color, in its shape, in its texture, so I kept repeating pieces over and over again. Here I am adding the final touches to my first project. There's that last piece. I actually liked it so much I decided to do another one right after this. This time I only used one shape and I used one color. Even repeating one print over and over again can create a really cool final project. And here are my final products. I hope you enjoyed this activity and made some prints you really love. Have fun creating your own everyday surprise prints. Share your artwork with friends and family. Handmade prints make wonderful gifts. Second Sunday at the Cantor is made possible through the generous support of the Hoback Family Fund. Thank you so much for participating, and we hope you all have a fun day.